Okay, welcome to my little Mifid Super 7. Um, I only got this recently. It was recently uh, with an owner who bought it from brand new. And he sadly passed away and I bought it off his widow. And she was very grateful that I was going to continue its, its life in making locomotives and wonderful other things. However, recently I came across a problem. I was taking a cut, facing off a part, and all of a sudden the whole cross slide jumped. And I thought to myself, oh goodness, what, what's happened here? And it occurred to me that the, the amount of slop, it backlash in my cross slides actually become quite excessive. Let's measure how much slop actually is in my cross slide. So let's use the DRO. I have six thou, twenty two thou, twenty three, twenty two and a half, yeah, twenty two. Oh, it gets a bit stiff out the back here, so it tells me it's much better. Yeah, look, look at that. 10, 10 thou and well right out here where it never gets used out here but uh yeah look at that oh, almost nothing two two now this is most likely due to wear and tear over the years and years and years of use this machine's got i initially thought the nut had gone and without thinking i jumped ahead and bought a new nut it's not the nut because at the very end here there's almost very little backlash but the backlash is quite severe and gets worse and worse and severe in the middle so that tells us quite quickly that the lead screw is worn out first thing i did went online thought oh we'll just buy a replacement one well of course it's sold out isn't it thank you very much oh dear what are we going to do so next plan was well could i make one uh, Acme 3 8 Acme lead screw, 10 TPI, possibly we could make one. Um, what's the other option is we could buy maybe buy a bit of Acme lead screw uh, and, and put one together. So I went to the UK distributor, had a look, and you know, I nearly fell off my seat when each when they uh, when the bill came at 400 pounds for just a 20 inches of of lead screw <laughs> this horrendous price so i've managed to buy a piece from mac mastercard in the states and are having it delivered via a courier in the states because they no longer deliver to the uk via because of brexit but they've got around that problem i'll put the links in the description so this will be the project let's see if i can replace this lead screw Okay, so first things first, let's take the lead screw out, have a look, uh, I'll take some measurements and make a drawing so we know what we're dealing with. Okay, let's take it over to the bench. Quite simple, just loosen the scrub screw here, and it's lock and collar, unscrews, a uh, quick glance. I can see visually down this end, the thread looks wonderful. But visually down here where my thumb is, you can definitely tell it's worn just by looking at it. So yeah, it definitely needs a replacement. The spring washer, it's got a taper on the end that's why it's locked on. Take off the adjusting screw and there we go there, we can make a nail maker drawer. There's a modification I'd like to make, and that's to install some thrust washers in here. I'm going to have to uh, bore out the front here, so this now sits flush inside. There's certainly a lot of meat in there. For the back side, I won't bore the back so that's flush. And what I'll do is I will make on my new on my new one. Let's take it back on. I shall make this boss just a little bit longer and gain back the lost distance. 
so while we wait for the postman to do over my uh, bit of Acme lead screw, let's go ahead and machine up to fit thrust bearing onto the guide bar of the for the lead screw because we need to machine a a little recess in here for this to fit. So to do that. <coughs> I've dug out the face plate. Oh, I think this is the first time I've used the face plate on this lathe. Uh, we've got the live tail stock to get it roughly in line. I'll clamp it down, get the indicator out, indicate it in. Okay, here we go. Here's the setup. So the cross slide is gone. So the gibs are, gib locking screws are tightened up. Let's lock the, lock the cross side. And I've set the compound to 90 degrees. So we have a replacement <laughs> replacement cross slide i have set up my depth stop so i don't go more than three i've got the dro here we've got to go three and a half so i've come just shy of that it's not it's not very silly obviously i don't have the dro anymore on my uh, cross slide because we're using the compound but you know a bit of careful measurement we'll get there Let's run the dial indicator one more time just to be sure because it could take metal away but you can't put it back so yeah we're dialed into less than a thou so let's go for it There's some uh, holes in the uh, blow holes in the castings. Interesting. Uh, here's the uh, bearing race. You put the, the three in, and there we go. Wow. Like a glove. Yeah, anyone would think we measured it. Eh? Perfect fit. Ever so slightly proud, which I'm happy with. Let's take that out. Take that out. And I can re rebuild. The cross tie. Bit cleaner up. I can't handle a dirty lathe. Okay, so there we go. It's back together after a quick clean. I've gone ahead and installed both thrust bearings actually. So we have a thrust bearing in here in between in between the uh, dial and the stand that we just machined. And there's the other thrust bearing in there. It's it's on. I'd say the, the thread runs to about here. So it's not ideal, but you know, it's fine fine for temporary measure. It's not gonna stay like this forever. And with the two thrust bearings in there, you can snug up, snug up the uh, adjusting washer nice and tight. And it's really, really smooth. It's really, really smooth. I'm really happy with that. That's a, that's a wonderful upgrade already. So on to replacing the lead screw next. And the post has come. One lovely loose screw. Um, leave me it there. You go. There's the receipt package list. Brilliant. Fifteen bucks. Uh, and because they don't deliver to the UK, I had it shipped to uh, via a courier called Stackery. I'll put a link in the description down below. Here we go. We have a drawing. It's not a very good drawing. I am not very good at drawings, but. Let's talk about how we're going to do this. I have a piece of cold rolled mild steel here. And this is the plan. I'm going to cut down the bar. There's enough here for two. So I'm going to cut the bar in half. Turn down the sh shoulder on the end. And the idea is to drill, drill in and slot it inside. Now, my first thought was to silver solder it in. No, on second thoughts, I'm not so 
I don't know if, if I'm so keen on that idea. I might just use the Loctite and a cross pin. Uh, the thread here just so happens, it took me a while to find out, is half inch by 26 TPI. I'm not sure if it's BSB or BSC, but I happen to have a BSB tap, so that's what it's going to be. Uh, I can run this tap onto the current currently screw, so that's a good sign. So that's what it's going to be. The plan is to machine the item in two parts. Uh, this half here we're going to do first. We're going to cut off a piece of material off this stock, chuck it up, turn down for half inch, uh, put the hole in, put the thread on, and that way I can be sure that this, this is the bearing surface here for inside the, the, the cross slide. So this bearing surface and the leaf screw can all be concentric. Everything this side is only for the dial indicator and handle so it doesn't necessarily be have to be perfectly concentric i mean yes it'd be nice to get close but but that's what we're going to do so we're going to do this end first turn it and flip it around pop it in a collet chuck because i just happened to have a collet chuck of half inch so we'll do that and then machine the back end uh the thread size is 2ba so there you go if anybody requires this plan i can maybe link to it in the description below. Let's chop some material and see what happens. Okay, let's do this. Start with the start with the bar and turn it turn tidy up the end and then do the other. The aim for a quarter of an inch. Think that one the that's probably what I got aimed for on the other end, so that's a good second. So the other end's gonna go into the part we're gonna make. Um, therefore, I want I want three quarters inside the part. So I'm going to make this flat area one inch long. So that would give me a quarter of an inch stick between the part and that's per the diagram. Quite a bit of stick out here, some light cups and then oil's all the way. Okay, should be five thou over. 
Yep, five. Three and a half. Yeah, some tape that comes on. Bow over, bang on quarter. Yeah, so I, I need to take the smallest of fractions off. One thousand, uh, one thousand a few tenths, one thousand a few tenths. I am very happy with that. That is probably the as good as my personal standard gets. Right, very good. Let's take this out and prep for the uh, other part. Three thou over. Okay, two thou under. Perfect. I'll live for that. I can live with this. Do, I'm going to go through with my high quality brand new quarter inch drill and that should do it perfect I reckon. This is not a machine shop so I don't have all the fancy tools so I have to get by. That's a beautiful fit. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. Okay, we go. Here is my, if you can see that, half inch 26 British Standard Brass die. It's going gonna, it's gonna to run this on. I'm not, I never have much luck, but we'll give it a go. Plenty of cutting oil. I knew it wasn't going to go easy, was it? Yeah, slow and steady wins the race here, chaps, because in the setup I've got I've got a bar, bar from my die stock, tail stock holder, just to help keep it square. And we'll just keep going nice and slow, backing up off, often to break those chips, keep plenty of oil. 
plenty of cutting oil. I'm going to go for half an inch. Get rid of the tail stock now. I've got more than enough in. Let's move the cross slide out of the way. Okay, there we go. There's the hard bit done. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, half inch. I'm just good to finish off making sure I got the part exactly the right length. Okay, there we go. This was the critical end and it's gone really well. Okay, here we go. Next, so we turn, we're gonna turn it around in the tailstock top chuck and we're gonna work on this dial area here for the handle and the adjustable dial. So let's do that. The collet chuck is grand. My cheap Chinese collets are a little to be desired, but there you go. Now I'm too far over. I'll take the tiniest skin. Spot on. We've done this area. We've done this area. We now have to do this tapered section. Got the compound set to 10 degrees and I'll advance it to its extreme end so I can't advance it anymore and we'll move the cutting tool until it touches off on that sh on this inner shoulder and I can now move my saddle stop up and touch it and lock that off Well, you can't see that, but it's just the tiniest of slivers. In fact, I'm calling it. That's that's it. It's done. It's good. It's good. There's a small small gap there, and it's the same as my tail stuck. Be a tap. It's always time for a bit of loop. go that's it take it apart put it all together and compare it with the other one okay here we are here's the parts we've made the idea is this goes in here i mean that's a beautiful really beautiful fit pissed almost piston fit should be perfect for a bit of loctite we can take the uh, old one apart. It's a 2 by 8 screw and the handle, spring washer, the dial, the other thrust washer. There we go, you can see, compare the two. I was making this shank ever so slightly longer. 
to uh, accommodate the the thrust washers uh, to accommodate these thrust washers here so that's ever so slightly longer that was planned for the actual lead screw itself is longer because I had excess no other reason <laughs> I had some I had more than enough so instead of throwing it in the scrap bin I made the cross slide a bit longer than than it should have been it'll be fine uh, so the plan now is to clean these up and lock tight them together with a bit of Loctite 603. So we'll do that. My choice of degreasant is acetone. That's what I use in my shop because, well, that's frankly what I've got. It's, it fits, fits on perfectly there. Let's have a look at this one. The actual dial is on this end. Oh, it's just perfect fit, you know. Like we measured it and cut it to size. You'll notice a bit of masking tape on the end here. I have taken off a little bit too much. It's not critical, but a little bit of masking tape for as a spacer because I took too much off and the dial no longer, adjustable dial no longer spins. Neither here nor there, but there we go. I'm not perfect. So reassembly. <clears throat> on goes the adjustable dial. Yeah. There's a spring washer. handle on be a screw in the end and tighten that up <clears throat> see now now that nice and nice tight I can still still adjust my adjustable dial whereas before I, it was locked up tight I don't use it much but it's you know it's been a shame not to have it uh Thrust washer, one of the spaces, one of the spacers, the bearing itself, the other spacer, the clamp, the casting from the MyFood, <coughs> the other thrust washer on the other end. The locking nut. <clears throat> now, one side has a ridge and the other side doesn't. I don't know which way around this goes, but because we've got a thrust washer here with a flat surface, I'm going to put this in with the flat surface against the the bearing to give the greatest contact. Now, this is why this here is the reason why before you couldn't do this thrush washer up really tight if you did it up tight the whole thing locked up and it was therefore a source of backlash but because we've got the thrust washers in now we can now nip this up reasonably tight and yet still be able to move the the handle therefore eliminating one source of backlash in the system Use this, big naughty. Use that to nip it up slightly. There we go. Can I still turn that? That's still nice. Yeah. Now the important point: if you buy this from the MyFood website, it'll cost you a fortune. I'm going to try not and drop it. It's a tiny piece of copper. If you've got a bit of copper, you could probably cut one out, stamp one out, or whatever. But that has to go in first into this hole. The reason being is when the grub screw pushes down on it. It doesn't destroy the threads on the lead screw. That's why it's there. So there we go. In case you do this, don't lose that part. Okay, get that up. Nice and tight. There we go. Okay, it's ready for going on the uh, back on the lathe. I am going to put on some copper slip. Uh, lubricant on here. There we go. I've got it just here. Let's put that on now. I'm going to put some copper slip. Reason being, I don't get access to this part of the lathe very often. Uh, normally, you'd use the normal oil, lubricating oil, but because I don't get access, I'm going to use this, and this should hopefully last longer and do just as good a job. Right. Over to the lathe. 
wind it back in. I can feel it already. It's already a million times better. Just, just feel it. Okay, the uh, tip here is not to do them up tight straight away. Just put them in so everything's not flaming around. Then I wind the cross slide all the way in, as far as it will go. Which is about there. Yeah. And then do it up. That way it stops any misalignment between the lead screw and the there we go I'll zero off the x-axis and uh, nothing left tenths let's wind out an inch Nothing. A bit more. Nothing. Perfect. So there you go. An excellent upgrade uh, repair to my Super 7. Um, I think the biggest tip of the day is perhaps where to buy the pre-made lead screw from. Uh, Stackery. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, total savings, therefore, for this project, £385 thereabouts. Woohoo! What a saving. It's like Christmas. Um, thank you. I'm not very good at making these videos, so leave a comment in the description if you have any questions. I'll see if I can help out. Thank you very much. Take care. Enjoy. Safe machining. Uh, just a quick add on to the end of this video i've been using this now for uh, a good good month uh, i've been flawless I've been perfectly happy with it it's been absolutely brilliant excellent modification i recommend it to anyone considering it um i want to make a quick shout out to craig from craig's workshop uh if it wasn't for him this video wouldn't exist i had an accident and broke my laptop and wasn't wasn't able to uh edit this video so he reached out and helped me out in a, in a bit of a fix so if you have a chance uh, go and check out his channel it's absolutely amazing he's one of the nicest chaps on planet earth um thank you craig